what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at it again with another video so we're gonna check out who's the biggest draw in wrestling by superkick studios shout out to yk.ju he sent this to me on instagram and this is an interesting video man when it comes to wrestling especially in wwe uh in the histories of wwe there's some noticeable people that you think of instantly when you think of the WWE, like Stone Cold, The Rock, uh, Hulk Hogan, um, Triple H, The Undertaker. Uh, you think of these guys, uh, Y2J, you, you think of these guys, you know what I'm saying? Or even take it to WCW back in the day. You think of Sting, you think of Goldberg, you think of, you know, well, even if you want to go back even further, you know, you think of Brett, Brett before he went to WCW, you know what I'm saying? Like, think of Shawn Michaels. These are people that were considered big draws back in the day. And I really want to see who, you know, he feels like is one of the bigger draws in wrestling of, of all time. And I really want to see you know where he ranks it if he does have a ranking for this video this is just an interesting video because if you watched wrestling growing up there were a lot of people that were tuning in specifically for one wrestler or multiple wrestlers because a lot of people had interesting characters back in the day on both wcw and wwf at the time so let's check this out appreciate all the love and support and let's get right into this being a draw in professional wrestling being a spectacle larger than life, mm -hmm. a character Andre the Giant. which the audience can get behind, selling merch, and of course, putting butts in seats. Yep. The term draw in professional wrestling is open to interpretation. For some people, they base it off of how many butts were put in the seats. Others base it on TV ratings or pay-per-view buys. Yes, and for this is some, true. it's how much of an attraction you were, how much you transcended the professional wrestling business and smooth that into the mainstream media. Yep. But who is the biggest needle mover in professional wrestling history? We got a story in the 1930s and oh, 40s damn. with a man named Jim Londos. Londos immigrated to America from Greece at age 12, and a matter of years later, he adopted a no-nonsense persona. Added to that was his physical appearance, which made Londos a huge draw. He was so talented, so strong, such a physical specimen, that he was able to attract an audience during the Great Depression of all times. Londos by many is called the biggest overall draw in wrestling history. Before the times of the WWE, before wrestling shifted its focus to entertainment rather than pure wrestling, it's reported that he was able to draw 100,000 people in Damn. the Athens Stadium. And 30,000 of those people were turned away during that event. Damn. Okay, we're I'm getting some wrestling history. Didn't even know, man. This he was a, a mega draw back then. Holy wow! His consistency and drawing power. His name definitely needs to be in the conversation okay. for this accolade. Granted, he didn't work a heavy schedule, but 30 years of being an attraction. That's quite impressive. You mm -hmm. know what else is impressive? Selling out Madison Square Garden 187 times. That is what Bruno Sammartino uh, did. He reigned as world champion for 11 out of 14 years and only lost that title because he basically begged to. He needed a break, so they took the title off of him. Back before, you needed a gimmick to be hot with crowds. Mm -hmm. There was a mystique around strong, no-nonsense bruisers, and yep. Sammartino was just that. He would run through opponents in record time. He would dispatch of people with the greatest of ease, so much so that he himself became a valuable commodity. That's when dope. you're that good that your nickname is the King of New York, you have something going for you. A consistent draw for over a decade. This came at a time where there were families with less televisions and wrestling hadn't boomed quite yet. Mm -hmm. But what about when professional wrestling did boom in North America? When Bruno's time was up, Vince McMahon wanted to turn WWE into a global juggernaut. He wanted to make that one star that could help him make a global expansion, and Hulk Hogan was that guy. Yep, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Despite his, you know, off-screen antics and things he's said, you can't deny Hulk Hogan was, he was wrestling. 
I, I don't know what else to say other than Hulk Hogan was wrestling. You know, he's before my time, but best believe when I got into wrestling, I knew who Hulk Hogan was. I, he was a mega draw. There's nothing else to say about it. The exuberant personality, the bright colors, the marketability, yeah. being able to live the role, Hulk Hogan had it all. Without Hulk Hogan, professional wrestling does not reach the heights it did in the Facts. 80s. Words this do is true. not do justice how much of an impact Hulk Hogan made in helping the WWF cross over into the mainstream mm -hmm. media. He was wrestling's first global megastar. He was the reason why wrestling went from a niche to catering to a worldwide. This is true. Yeah. Without Hulk Hogan, there's no there's no Stone Cold's The Rocks. You know what I'm saying? There's no Mick Foley's. There's no, you know, Triple H's. And I, I mean in the sense of they probably may have gotten into wrestling still. But it wouldn't have appealed to the mainstream as well as it did because it was Hulk Hogan did that. An audience, the charisma, the physique, the leg drop, the iconic yep. shirt tear and recognizable pose. The reason why a lot of us are here today is because of Hulk Hogan. He was on SNL, true. he was making guest appearances, he was shipping every type of merch imaginable for a sustained period of time. He was the one selling out buildings, and he was the one who began the era of sports entertainment. Yep. Without the groundwork that Hulk Hogan laid, there is no Attitude Era. Hulkamania was the rise of professional wrestling in North America. Not to mention that he was the reason that WrestleMania became as successful as it did. Mm -hmm. Without Vince McMahon having Hogan there to pull the trigger on that event, all the crossover with celebrities and actors just doesn't happen. Yep. When he jumped to WCW, he's the one who made it go from competition to the A show for 83 straight weeks with the formation of the NWO. Yes, this is, this is true. This is true. I think people had gotten tired of the goody two shoes type wrestling. And when he went to WCW, formed the NWO, I'm not going to lie to you. The NWO was the coolest thing on television. There was nothing. It was to see Hulk Hogan be that way, to see him be an ass. Like, this was cool. He was, he was a likable character, man. They really started something amazing. And I ain't going to lie to you. Hulk Hogan, definitely one of the biggest draws, if not the biggest draw that has spiraled to create everything else. You know what I'm saying? Especially in the 80s. People wanted 80s, to see early Hogan. 90s. He helped television networks get ratings, not to mention the NWO shirt, which on its own is one of the highest selling pieces of wrestling merch ever. Yep. What bodes in Hogan's favor was that this was when wrestling was hip. The marketability was there. You could plaster his logo and color scheme onto anything and it would turn a profit. People wanted his merchandise. People wanted to be Hulk Hogan. He was a character larger than life. He was the one who drew 93,000 fans at WrestleMania 3 with Andre. Woo. Eight of the first nine manias, he was the one who main evented. Damn. He did it in the AWA, the WWF. WCW, Japan, and then right back to WWE all over again. Hogan simply drew money, fans, yeah. and ratings for 20 years on a consistent basis. And with that, he made wrestling a global phenomenon. This is Speaking true. Speaking of phenoms, we got to quickly touch on The Undertaker. The thing with The Undertaker was, yes, he was a draw, but he was more so a draw for hardcore fans. Yeah. He kept hardcore fans engaged to the product during the PG era with his character work and constant dedication. Yep. He himself made WrestleMania his event with the streak. It basically I'm not going to lie to you. A lot of people would tune in to, the, to watch WrestleMania to see if he will actually lose. He was carrying a lot of these WrestleManias. Not to say that some of them didn't have fantastic main events and stuff like that, but he was carrying a lot of the later WrestleManias because people literally was just watching to see if they would pull the trigger and have The Undertaker lose. That's just what it was. Basically became an attraction that people would come to watch every year. Mm -hmm. Would the streak finally end? The thing that deters him to being the answer for many people is... Even though he is the best pure character in wrestling history, yeah. you didn't see Undertaker on TV. 
you didn't see Undertaker skyrocket a boom period for WWE. Mm -hmm. He was there and he was a huge part, yes. He's a recognizable name, yes. But his crossover appeal and overall marketability outside of catering to hardcores, not necessarily there. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. What does the Statue of Liberty, the Eiffel Tower, and the Taj Mahal have in common? These are landmarks that people go out of their way to see. Andre the Giant was much the same. Standing at 7 foot 3, Jesus. Andre the Giant is probably the biggest attraction wrestler that the wrestling business will ever see. Andre was in the 70s what Hogan was in the 80s. Yep. He was a grand spectacle that people would come in just to see the sheer size of and Jeez. how a man that large would compete in a ring. The guy is considered a god in places like Japan. He'd be paid five figures to work one night. Jeez. He broke into mainstream movies with his role in The Princess Bride. He made people money. Seeing someone that big do what he did, it was dollar signs. He was that coveted. Wherever Andre went, people lined up in droves. Mm -hmm. Then you look at a guy like Ric Flair, who is a huge draw. In Ric Flair. I mean, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video. Ric Flair. A mega draw. It's Ric Flair. Willing and dealing. Styling and profiling. It's Ric Flair. Just all you got to do is put woos. Just say a couple of woos. Woo! You know, that's it in the NWA territories, making those shows the most attended ones, reigning as world champion and making babyface stars. Flair's style was perfect in the NWA, but as pay-per-views and television networks started to rise, people started to find Ric Flair's limitations in the ring. The way he wrestled, yeah, it was a draw for the NWA system, but probably wouldn't have worked on a larger scale like WWF or WCW. But I think universally the man that is regarded as mm -hmm. the biggest draw in professional wrestling history Stone is Cold. Stone Cold Steve yep. Austin. When the argument is made between Austin and Hogan, people will say that yes, Hogan drew for a longer period of time, but Austin drew better numbers in a smaller period of time. I can see that. Granted, once again, without Hogan being that mainstream uh, rocket boost, you know, Stone Cold may not have been may not have been as over in a sense of mainstream appeal. Because I want y'all to understand, Stone Cold was that guy. Didn't it didn't matter what race you was, black, white, any, it didn't matter. You loved Stone Cold for what he stood for. No nonsense guy doesn't take BS from anybody. Doesn't care if you are the boss, he will stun you. He is what he was the embodiment of what everyone wanted to do when they had a nine to five. They just didn't want to hear the boss mouth. They just wanted to stun their boss, but they couldn't because, you know, had to make a living. But Stone Cold was somebody you could live through because he, Vince McMahon, didn't matter. Oh, you own the company? You pay my paycheck? Don't matter. I'm going to give you a stunner. Oh, you don't like me? I'm going to give you a stunner. Oh, you're a cool guy. I'm going to give you a stunner. It was just great. He was just a fantastic character overall, overall, and a mega draw. I don't know what else to say. He is the embodiment of the Attitude Era. Made them a lot of money. If you were to inflate Austin's numbers, he'd be higher than Hogan. Austin was WWE's hottest star in their most profitable era. Yep. A time where everything was wrestling. The Attitude Era. Without Stone Cold, the WWF was dead. He carried that roster and plugged WWF from going out of business. His popularity with the fans was sky high. Mm -hmm. He received some of the biggest reactions and fanfare in the history of yes. pro wrestling. Then came his merch sales, which are unopposed by any other star in the time frame Austin performed. The Austin 316 shirt yeah. is the highest selling shirt in wrestling history, and to this day, Austin remains one of the top merchandise sellers in the WWE. With that, wherever he went, he was able to bring people into arenas. Mm -hmm. The badass persona, the simple yet very recognizable look, and of course, the Austin 316 catchphrase. He was the one who, after Hogan left, brought WWF back to the mainstream eye in its most popular time. Mm -hmm. They were able to branch off into different ventures, be that merchandise, television commercials, and overall mainstream exposure. He did this during the height of the Monday Night Wars, and mm -hmm. in that boom period for wrestling, 
he won the war for WWF. This he is turned all the tide against WCW, and his returns in the 2000s generated bigger needle-moving business than any wrestling return. And it was so much more than that. That goes for live events, merchandise, TV ratings, pay-per-view buys. That is undisputable. Austin is the reason why in 1999, WWE went from a private company to a public company. Wrestling was at its height. Sure, yep. Hogan kickstarted the initial boom, but during the second boom, Stone Cold carried it to astronomical heights, which are yet to be seen again. But at the same time as Stone Cold Steve Austin, the company had another full-time megastar, yep. and that was The Rock. The Rock. Both these men's popularities at a fever pitch at the same time. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will argue that The Rock's popularity came because of Stone Cold. But when you look at the Attitude Era's prime years, that was in 1999 to 2001. Some of those years, Stone Cold was injured, and having The Rock at the top, the company was just fine. Yeah. For The Rock, you look at his buy rates. His involvement in wrestling... WrestleMania 17, one of my favorite WrestleManias, of course, it was in Houston. Uh, one of the best main events of all time, Stone Cold versus The Rock. I mean, it was great. And then, of course, the turn was kind of a, you know, it had mixed reactions. I mean, people were still cheering Stone Cold because they liked Stone Cold, even though he aligned with Vince McMahon. But it was just... This whole pay-per-view, for the most part, was enjoyable. Seeing Edge jump from a ladder, Jeff Hardy, from a ladder as he's holding on to the titles. One of the most iconic things in WrestleMania history. And reportedly, they never even practiced that spot. They, they talked about it. They just never practiced it. Just, just ridiculous, man. Bruh, I, I could go on and on about this pay-per-view. WrestleMania 27 as the guest host alone got that show 6.6 .6 million dollars and then he has to his name the most bought Wrestlemania ever Wrestlemania 28 with John Cena 1,217,000 buys but pay-per-view buys aside you look at The Rock's marketability having mm -hmm. a catchphrase like do you smell what The Rock is cooking selling t-shirts appearing yep. in mainstream television creating a brand for himself which he was able to later on translate into hollywood yep not to mention his unrivaled sales in home video merchandise and event tickets the audience hung on his every word this is he true had the charisma the fun moves the compelling character many will say that the rock took things even higher by giving stone cold a run for his money yeah. 2000 to 2002 those were the years where it was the rock show Rock was on the cover of all the video games and yep. magazines. He was hosting SNL, and many would say that he was the biggest pop culture influence at that time. Mm -hmm. There are some factors that deter The Rock from being regarded as the bona fide top draw in the industry. The longevity is one of them because he turned to Hollywood pretty quick. Yeah. But in today's day and age, if you were to put The Rock's face on merchandise, if you were to tell audiences that he'd be returning, just based on his overall global appeal and stature in the entertainment industry, he would easily drop. Facts. But there's no, there's Every no denying is filled with special it. If surprises, The Rock celebrated together. was to come back and they announce it for for any show, it's instantly gonna get some more views now because people like The Rock. They look, they like his movies for the most part. He's entertaining. People are gonna tune into that. Of course, the rumors are going he's supposed to return at Survivor Series. I hope he does, because if he does, man, the roof off that, that, off that building is going to explode. When The Rock and Austin were gone, what about when the Attitude Era had ran its course? Well, then WWE was left without a main attraction. Mm -hmm. And then we had Brock Lesnar's mega push to the top. Yep. And let's be real, Brock Lesnar did not become a draw in WWE. He became a draw when he left WWE. This guy was carrying the UFC for a period of time with some of the highest fight mm -hmm. card buy rates. When he came back in 2012, he was a much bigger name because of his dominance in the UFC. People were like, this is a legit fighter and now he's going back to WWE, which created a huge buzz. A recognizable name which caters to both fans of sports entertainment and the mm -hmm. combat world. <clears throat> 
Brock brought in fans from the UFC to WWE and vice versa. When you look at the presence, sheer viewership, television numbers, and worldwide appeal, Brock's the guy. And then you come to the quintessential company man. Marketable mm -hmm. and consistent. John and Cena. That is John Cena. You can say whatever you want about John Cena, but you cannot argue, much like Hogan smoothed the transition from niche to mainstream, Cena did that for TV 14 to PG. John Cena has made WWE the most money ever over. Yep, you may not like him. You, you may not have liked how he, you know, was at, at definitely at one point shoved down our throats. But John Cena, for the kids that were growing up in the PG era, they were his Hulk Hogan. They were his Stone Cold. Simple as that. I even got tired of the John Cena gimmick because of all the times he was winning. But at the same time, I can understand because as a kid watching wrestling, you see this guy. You're going to all kids loved him. Families loved him. He's marketable. So I get it. He wasn't always my favorite, but I could respect when it wasn't really, he wasn't really geared towards us. At at the beginning, he was with his, his rapping persona and his edgier comments. But as the years went by, he was geared more towards the children and the children look up to him. So I can't even get mad at that. We're all for merchandise. Not one particular item, but wristbands, t-shirts, yep. obscure items like these. You name it, Cena turned a profit for that company. Yeah, he Simple did. Simple things like a spinner championship. People will complain, but you look at PG, parental guidance, catering to an audience yep. of children and families. John Cena's superhero character, that was him. the bright colors, the friendly face on the merchandise. It was the perfect money-making machine for the WWE. Then you look at how much Cena helped expand WWE's global viewership and make himself a household name. Nine times out of ten, you ask someone who John Cena is, they'll tell you no problem. Yeah, he's he's one of those people who has transcended into the world outside of wrestling. People know who John Cena is, right? It's, especially now that he's been in more movies and stuff like that. People know who he is. As one of very few megastars who can still go in the ring, when Cena returns, it boosts attendance and it does. figures. It does. Looking at ratings, yes, they did fall under Cena's hand. Mm -hmm. But that was an inevitable drop that was going to come no matter what. As television becomes more oriented towards on-demand, the numbers will go down. The thing with Cena being so high in merchandise sales is also that his longevity has been extremely strong for the company. Mm -hmm. If you were to adjust someone like Stone Cold's number, he'd be in the same ballpark. Also with Cena, the ability to cross over into the mainstream. You look at the You Can't See Me, which became globally recognized. Mm -hmm. The amount of goodwill he brought to the WWE with his charitable work. The whole persona and legacy he built for the company. There you go. If you want to talk pay-per-view buy rates, Cena shares that distinction with The Rock. And then you look at a guy like CM, CM Punk. Punk man. CM Punk's run on top of WWE was very short. And it has yeah. an asterisk beside it because... They didn't really let him break out into that mainstream media. Then you look at his AEW return and the amount of viewership and t-shirt sales it got. He was the one, although for a brief time, that ended Cena's reign as the top merch seller. Speaking of reigns, we get to the Tribal Chief. Oh man, I knew he was going to get there, man. And CM Punk, I feel like if they would have probably treated him better he could have he he was on his way to being the next guy to really elevate that company because older fans could get behind someone that gave them that edgier content that that it didn't just reek of pg like he didn't have to curse it and go crazy with it but it just he cared more about professional wrestling and bringing some aggressiveness and some attitude to whatever he was doing. And it worked. It's just they didn't really, you know, treat him well. And, and you know, they kind of kind of treated him as a um, as a, a, a means to an end. They knew his popularity was astronomical. But at the same time, they didn't really treat him the, with the respect that he claimed that he deserved. And understandable. You know what I'm saying? You know, letting a man go on his wedding day, that was just petty. You know, and he always, you know, told the company line. He did, you know, what Vince wanted him to do, no matter what it was. Even if he wasn't 
you know, in agreement, he did what Vince wanted him to do, and he just felt like he got portrayed. You know, he felt like he was being held down. So I'm glad he is in AEW doing the things that he loves and, and you know, is in a, a better place mentally and physically. The man who reportedly has rivaled John Cena's merch totals as a heel, no less. Yeah. Right now, the exposure for him is amazing. He's on Fox, a huge network. He's easily the biggest full-time star in all of pro wrestling. Yep. His reactions are getting hotter and hotter every yep. week. And he's the top guy at a time where WWE is grossing their highest income. Yep. I think gauging Reigns' popularity at this time is a double-edged sword. Yeah, you can see it on social media and with crowds. But also, we're in a very streaming-oriented world where mm -hmm. people will watch clips on YouTube rather than actually sitting down in front of their TVs. So yes, Roman Reigns is a draw right now, but how much of a needle mover he is will be seen in years to come. Yeah, There's still a ways to go. So, who is it? Who is the biggest draw in wrestling history? Well, if you're talking sheer money, the best money draw in professional wrestling is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Figure that. If you were to say that he'd be returning tomorrow to the ring, all the older fans would want to see it, coupled with the new generation too. Yep. The glass shatters when that man enters, yep. and so does the money. But if you look at pure drawing power, being a physical specimen, no over-the-top BS, then the answer is probably Londo, San Martino, or Andre. If you bunch longevity, Cena and Hulk are the kings of uh -huh. drawing a consistent ownership and translation into the mainstream sphere of the entertainment business. If I had to pick one, it would be Stone Cold. Mm. He didn't outstay his welcome. He helped WWE reach astronomical heights, saved a product that could have been down under. I'd say the issue in determining who's the biggest draw comes down to a multitude of factors. You don't have access to company financials. Yeah. The eras are very different. Inflation is the thing that needs to be determined. True. And the overall popularity of wrestling is not in the same scope anymore. This it's a debate true. that's going to rage on forever. But who do you think is the biggest draw in professional wrestling history? Who, in your opinion, is the biggest needle-moving star in the history of professional wrestling? Let me know in the comments below. That is a good question. Seeing what you guys have. That is a good question, and uh, I'm going to answer it first for myself. If I had to choose, honestly, I'm going to give it to Stone Cold. I, you know, I can respect what Hulk Hogan has done. Obviously, without Hulk Hogan, you don't have a lot of these stars, but I have to give it to Stone Cold because it, uh, it was, like he said, when you heard that glass break, people lost their shit. How many times have we watched videos on this channel? And I told you, you heard the glass break. JR going crazy on commentary. Goosebumps. He is like the biggest draw in professional wrestling. One of, if not the biggest draw in professional wrestling, in my opinion. And you may have some different ones as well. So I want to know, this is going to be an interesting one. I want to know who is your biggest who you think is the biggest draw in professional wrestling of all time who you think is one of the biggest or is the biggest draw that wrestling has ever seen i want to know why i want to know the reasonings behind it um i feel like with stone cold even though he doesn't you know really pop up as much i feel like if you were to announce stone cold will be on the show people will tune in just just to see stone cold just to hear the glass break, you know? And a lot of these people on this list, if you were to ask them to, to return, you know, you saw how crazy I went when John Cena returned. I wasn't even expecting that. So it's just one of those things where it's like, I think it works in a sense of the wrestlers still having that main, that that power to give the audience that, that pop, no matter how long they've been away from the product. That, that's really a, a big factor to me. And we all know Stone Cold was selling merch. Just ridiculous amount of merch. You know what I'm saying? It was Stone fucking... It was Stone Cold Steve Austin. Like, 316, man. Like, I don't know what to tell you, bro. He, he was just... He came at the right time. And he helped WWF at the time really boost their views, boost their elevations. And he helped them ultimately... 
defeat WCW in the Monday Night Wars. He was one of the people that helped with that. So, yeah, man. Comment down below. Let me know who is the biggest draw in wrestling history, in your opinion. Why? And uh, I would love to see what you guys come up with. Who's in your list? Who do you think it deserves that title, man? And, and no one's opinion is wrong. We're just here to have a friendly conversation. So I appreciate all of the support. Roll to CCK. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.